Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sound of suspense. Welcome to the fear you can hear. But mostly to the world of terrifying imagination. In the next 52 minutes, you'll hear a story about a girl with a most unusual talent. A talent for finding lost dolls or dead bodies. You may not be glad you met Iris Lloyd, but we don't think you'll forget her. And Faith! And Faith! I'm here! I'm here! Come and find me! Where are you? Oh, my poor darling! Where are you? Help me! Help me! It's so dark, and I'm afraid! Our mystery drama, The Girl Who Found Things, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Sletzer and stars Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal, and by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. of the girl who found things. It begins serenely enough in the pleasant little town of Medvale, but with a woman who is preparing to leave it just as soon as her taxi arrives. Come in, Lucas. The door is open. Oh, for heaven's sakes, that man's dead. Oh, evening, Miss Wheeler. I hope I'm not too early. No, I'm all packed. Uh, You can take that trunk in the hallway first. Then I've got a few small suitcases, but they can go on the back seat with me. Yes, ma'am. Is that all you're taking to Europe? I sent the rest ahead to the ship. Well, go on, Lucas. Start loading that taxi. Uh, Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I was just wondering if there was something you wanted me to do in the house for closing it up, you know. It's all been done, Lucas. You sure you turned off the gas, electricity? How about the fireplace? I see you had a fire this morning. Are you sure it's good and cold? Oh, I suppose you could check it again, just in case. Better safe than sorry, they say. (laughs) Uh, Seems to me you've got a couple of embers burning there. Maybe I could put them out with a shovel. Please hurry, Lucas. Yes, ma'am. I'm going about this fast as I can. Uh, you see, this isn't easy for me. What isn't? Lucas, for heaven's sake, put the shovel back. You're tracking ashes all over the floor. Uh, please. Please turn around, Miss Wheeler. Don't look at me. Lucas, are you crazy? I can't do this if you're looking at me. Lucas, put that down. I'm sorry, Miss Wheeler. <laughs> do it, Miss Wheeler. I had to. Now I got to pick you up. Take you outside through the woods. That's where I got to bury you, Miss Wheeler. much farther, David. We've been driving for hours. Almost there, darling. Just relax. Tell me more about your Aunt Faith. I don't really feel prepared to meet her. No one's ever fully prepared for Aunt Faith. I warn you that she's something of a character. Mm, Just waiting to be discovered by monthly digest. Well, anyway, after my mother died, she became less auntie and more motherly. That's why she was so upset when I got married and failed to do my filial duty. By bringing your bride home for approval. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I suppose she's going to resent me for being two years too late. Well, take my word for it. She'll be crazy about you. But remember what I said. She's an old gypsy. Don't be surprised if she drags out a crystal ball and starts predicting your future. Uh, Speaking of which, there's our future for the next few months straight ahead of us. The old homestead. 
David, is that you? It's us, Aunt Faith. Oh, oh David, <laughs> my <laughs> handsome boy. Hello, Aunt Faith. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Well, it's wonderful seeing you. Uh, uh, Aunt Faith, meet Rowena. Well, and it's about time. Hello, Mrs. Demarest. Nice to meet you at last. <laughs> Oh, David, she's beautiful. <laughs> well, come inside. Come in. I've got a fire going. Let me take your coat, my dear. Oh, what a lovely fur. What is it? Mink sable. Uh, I told Rowena she ought to wear the label on the outside so that people... Oh. Oh, well, I, I didn't know that you had company, Auntie. Uh, oh, yes. David, this is Lieutenant Reese. Lieutenant, this is my nephew, David Wheeler, and his wife, Rowena. Ah, Lieutenant. Uh, that isn't a military title, is it? Uh, no, sir. I'm with the police. Oh, of course. Well, how do you do? I'm sorry we have to meet this way, but then I always seem to meet people when they're in trouble. Of course, I've known Mrs. Demarest for some time. Well, Lieutenant Reese has been a wonderful help of my charity work, David. And he's been such a comfort since this awful thing happened. Yes. Oh, well, it's been years since I was in this room. I'd appreciate it if you and I could have a word alone. Oh? Oh, Rowena, I'll tell you what. Why don't you and I go upstairs and I'll show you your room? Yes, that would be fun. I can even show you the room where David was born and his old nursery. Well, uh, how long has it been since you left Medvale, Mr. Wheeler? Oh, maybe ten years. I've been back here on visits, of course. Once when my father died four years ago. As you know, our family business is down south. Yes, yes, I know. You and your sister... My half-sister. Uh, yes, you and your half-sister, Geraldine. Uh, you were the only proprietors of the mill, weren't you? Mm-hmm, that's right. But you did most of the managing, I gather. When your parents died, Miss Wheeler kept the estate and you went to Virginia to manage the mill. That's how it was, right? That's how it was. Successfully, would you say? Uh, Lieutenant, I'm going to save you a great deal of time. Geraldine and I didn't get along. We saw as little of each other as we both could arrange, and that was very little. Thank you for being frank. I can even guess your next question, Lieutenant. You'd like to know when I saw Geraldine last. When did you? Three months ago in Virginia, on her semi-annual visit to the mill. But you were in Medvale after that, weren't you? Well, yes, I came up to see Geraldine in March on a business matter... As my aunt may have told you, Geraldine refused to see me. Now, what sort of business matter was it? I wanted Geraldine to approve a bank loan I wished to make to purchase new equipment. She was against it, wouldn't even discuss it. So I went home. And you never saw her again? Never. And in case you're wondering, Lieutenant, I have no idea where she is. No idea at all. <laughs> Sure you don't want some tea, Rowena? No, thank you, Aunt Faith. I'll stick to Scott. Oh, I have some tea, darling. Auntie wants to read your future in the leaves. Oh, I wish I could read the future. Or rather, the past. You're thinking about Geraldine. I simply can't understand what became of her, David. She was all set for that trip to Europe. Some of her bags were already on the ship. You remember Lucas, the taxi driver? Oh, yes, of course. Well, he came out here to pick her up, take her to the station, but she wasn't here. She wasn't anywhere. Well, I suppose the police checked all the usual sources. Hospital, morgues, everywhere. Uh, Lieutenant Reese said anything could have happened to her. She might have been robbed and murdered. She might have lost her memory. She might even have... Well, this I'd never believe, but Lieutenant Reese said she might have disappeared deliberately with some man. I know what happened to her. Do you? She just left. She just walked out of this big, gloomy house and this crawly little town... She was sick of living alone. David, I have an idea about how we can find Geraldine. Really? I'm going to ask Iris Lloyd where Geraldine is. <laughs> ask who? Iris Lloyd. Now, don't tell me you've never heard of the child. For there was a story in the papers about her only two months ago, and heaven knows I've mentioned her in my letters a dozen times. I remember. She's the one who's psychic or something. Some sort of orphan? Yes, Iris is a ward of the state, a resident at the Medvale Home for Girls. I've been vice chairman of the place for donkey's years. That's how I know her. Well, she's 16, David, and absolutely uncanny. And what makes her such a phenomenon? 
she's a seer, David. A genuine clairvoyant. Oh, well, not a medium at 16. Oh, no. I suppose you could call her a, a finder. She seems to have the ability to find things that are lost. People, too. How does she do it? I'm not sure Iris knows herself. The gift hasn't made the poor child happy. Such talents rarely do. You know, one day, the home had a picnic at Crompton Lake. They discovered an eight-year-old named Dorothea was missing. They couldn't find her until Iris Lloyd began screaming. Screaming? These insights cause a great pain. But she was able to describe the place where Dorothea could be found, where the girl had sprained her ankle. Oh, you're right, Auntie, darling. I don't agree with you. Let's just leave the search to the police. David. David, I've arranged with the home for Iris to spend some time with us. Are you serious? You invited that girl here? Well, she has to become acquainted with Geraldine's aura. Don't you see? The aura that's still in this house. Well, I won't have it. I, I'm sorry, Annie, but the whole thing's ridiculous. Oh, I knew you would object, David, but I'm afraid I have to insist. We're picking up the girl this afternoon. Oh, really now, Aunt Faith? You understand, my dear, don't you? Well, yes, I understand, Mrs. Demerick. And I'm looking forward to meeting Iris Lloyd. <laughs> Come in, Mrs. Demarest. I suppose this is the nephew you told me about. Yes, sister. This is Mr. David Wheeler. David, this is Sister Clotilde, who runs the home. Well, how do you do, sister? How do you do? In case your aunt hasn't told you, Mr. Wheeler, I'm not at all in favor of this move. I think it's wrong to encourage Iris in this delusion of hers. Well, then you and I agree with each other, sister. Oh, it's not a delusion, Sister Clotilde. It's a gift from God. She's undisciplined. You might even say wild. But you are letting us have her, sister. She can come home with us. Did you think my poor objections carry any weight, Mrs. Demarest? One moment. Sister Pauline, would you send Iris Lloyd in now? Shall I come in? Yes, Iris, come in. Iris, you know Mrs. Demarest. This is her nephew, Mr. Wheeler. Hello. Hello. You remember me, Iris. I've been coming here at least three or four times a year to see all you girls. Yes, Mrs. Demarest. Now, the directors have been good enough to let us take you home with us for a while. We need your help, Iris. We want you to see if you can find someone who is lost. Yes, Mrs. Demarest. I'd like to come home with you. I'd like to help you find Mrs. Wheeler. Oh. Then you, you know about my poor niece, Iris? The Secret Service couldn't have secrets here, Mrs. Demarest. You know how girls are. Uh, well, I guess we can get started any time, if Miss Lloyd is ready. Please, call her Iris, Mr. Wheeler. Remember that you're still dealing with a child. <laughs> Iris, I hope you'll enjoy staying with us. I have a lovely room for you. I'm sure you'll like it. You know what I'd really like? What's that? A cigarette. What? Iris! Oh, don't tell me you smoke, Iris. Only when I can get away with it. Well, you're not getting away with it now, for heaven's sake. Oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> Lucas, well, how are you? How's the taxi business, hmm? Hey, could I talk to you a minute, Mr. Wheeler? Uh, no, Lucas, I'm sorry. I've got to get these groceries home. We have company for dinner tonight. She's at your place, ain't she? That girl. What girl? That Iris Lloyd, the girl who finds things. I'm afraid of her, Mr. Wheeler. I'm afraid she'll find out what we did. Shut up. Don't you ever say anything like that to me again. I'm scared, Mr. Wheeler. I'm telling you, that girl is peculiar. She knows what you're thinking, they say. She knows where you can find anything, even dead bodies. Get away from me, Lucas. I told you to keep away from me when I came here. Now, get away from my car before I run you down. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared of that little girl. Lucas, the taxi driver. 
Lucas, the murderer, is scared. But David Wheeler seems to be frightened, too. And maybe we'll learn if the fright is justified when we return shortly with Act Two. Let's go back to the little town of Medvale for the second act of The Girl Who Found Things. David Wheeler has just returned from his shopping trip, but he finds things are different in the big house at the end of the road. What happened here, Rowena? This room looks like a cyclone hit it. It was Hurricane Iris. What are you talking about? Aunt Faith caught her sweet little orphan Annie in here smoking one of my cigarettes. I didn't hear the whole argument, but I'll tell you one thing. That girl has the vocabulary of a longshoreman. <laughs> well, maybe that'll knock some sense into Aunt Faith. Iris started throwing things, and that's when Aunt Faith went upstairs to lie down. I'll go and see her. Tell her to take her psychic delinquent back where she came from. I wouldn't bother her now. She's not feeling well. Hmm. Well, I'll see the little monster then. Where is she? Next door to us, in Geraldine's room. Iris? Iris, it's Mr. Wheeler. May I come in? Hello, handsome. Auntie says you went shopping. What have you been up to, Iris? Now, my aunt isn't a well woman, and we won't put up with any bad behavior. Now, what happened downstairs? Nothing. I found a button in ashtray and took a couple of drags. You'd think I was committing a mortal sin the way she yelled at me. I heard you did some fancy yelling yourself. Is, uh, is that what the sisters taught you at the home? They didn't teach me anything worthwhile. Well, maybe you need more instruction. Maybe you better get back there as soon as possible. Oh, Mr. Wheeler, please. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. I, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, please don't send me back. No, no, wait. Oh, oh, wait a minute now. Oh, please don't do it. Oh, don't. Oh, what's going on? Oh, oh, Mrs. Demarest, I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. It, it was the devil. I'm sure it was the devil. Trying to take my body into... Oh, there, there, Iris. It's all right, dear. I know you didn't mean what you said. No, it's a gift that makes you this way. And and don't worry about what I asked you to do. You take your time about Geraldine. Take as long as you like. Oh, but I want to help. I really do, Aunt Faith. Now, wait a minute, Auntie. You're not going to fall for this... Oh, listen. Listen. Do you know something? I can feel your niece in this house, Aunt Faith. I really can. I can feel her in this room, whispering to me, trying to tell me where she is. Can you, Iris? Can you really? For heaven's sake, Annie, can't you see that I she... can. I, I can. I, I can feel her everywhere. I can almost touch Miss Wheeler. Oh, is this her closet? These are her clothes. Oh, they're so beautiful. She must have looked beautiful in them. Has Iris ever seen a photo of Geraldine? Oh, look at this one. It's all gold. All shiny gold. And it's so long. Was she very tall? It's an evening gown, Iris. Oh, I can sense her in this gown. I can. I just know I'm going to be able to find her for you, Aunt Faith. I know it. Yes. Yes, I believe that too, my child. Won't you have some more of the beef, Rowena? No, thank you. And we'd better save some for Iris. Something tells me that little girl has a very big appetite. Well, I wish she'd come downstairs. I told her dinner would be served at 7.30. Would you like me to go upstairs and see if she's all right? No, no. I'm sure she'll be down in a moment. You've really forgiven her completely, haven't you? Of course. Oh, you don't understand psychic personality, David. It wasn't her swearing at me this afternoon. It was this, this demon which possesses her. The same spirit that gives her the gift of insight. David, your fork. Take a look at what's coming downstairs in a gold lamé evening gown. For heaven's sake. Hello, everyone. Iris, whatever are you wearing? You go upstairs and get that dress off. You have no right to wear my sister's clothes. Take it off? Why should I? You heard me. Get that dress back in the closet. I won't. I won't, Aunt Faith. No, I won't take it off. 
You know what I told you. I have to wear your niece's clothes so I can feel her, her aura. You're going to feel my foot in about five seconds if you don't go upstairs. No, everybody in this house hates me. <laughs> oh, I, I don't. No, please don't cry. Oh, David, you shouldn't talk that way to the poor girl. I won't stay here. I won't help you find your niece, that's all. You can't do anything of a kind and you know it. Iris, Iris, listen to me. Iris. You remember those things you did at the home? The way you found things for Sister Therese? Yes. Do you think you could do something like that again? Right now for us? I, I, I don't know. I could try. Would you let her try, David? I don't know what you mean. Now, I want you to hide something or name some object you've lost or misplaced. Perhaps somewhere in this house. This is silly. It's a parlor game. The least you can do is try it. All right. How do we play this game of hide and seek? David, what about the cat? The cat? You remember. You once told me about a wool kitten you used to have as a child. You said you lost it somewhere in the house when you were five. And you were so unhappy about it you wouldn't eat for days. Well, that's 30 years ago, Rowena. All the better. All the better, David. Iris, do you think you could find it? Could you find David's claw kitten? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm never sure. Just try, Iris. We won't blame you if you fail. It, it might have been thrown out ages ago, but try anyway. All right. I will. But you'll have to shut off the lights. And then what? Burn incense and chant? David, please, turn off the room. I'll do it. There, Iris. Mm. The room is dark enough, isn't it? Yes, yes. It's dark enough when I close my eyes. What's she doing? Breathing, obviously. Mm. I think she's going into a trance. Mm. It's so hard to know if she's faking or not, isn't it? Not for me, darling. She isn't, David. I know she isn't. She's in a genuine trance. Listen. Hot. Oh, it's so hot. She's sweating. So hot. She isn't taking that, David. Oh, so hot back here. Oh, please. Oh, please. Kitty is hot. Hot kitty is hot. Kitty. She could be talking about the world cat. Well, what if she is? Oh, please. Please, somebody. Help. Help, Kitty. Help her. Please help, Kitty. Ah! 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 The girl is in pain. It's an act, I tell you. Hot. Behind the stove. So hot. Kitty, so hot. Behind the stove. Is that what she said? Iris. Iris, darling, are you all right? David, turn on the lights quickly. Addie, it was all gibberish. Rowena, it's just nonsense. You're so stubborn, David. Well, she said it clearly. The kitten's behind the stove. Well, you probably stopped it when you were a little brat of a boy. We could find out, couldn't we? Is the same stove still in the kitchen? I suppose so. There's a microwave oven, too, but they've never moved the old iron monster. Let's look, David, please. I can't feel anything behind here. Well, try the other side, David. Oh, this is ridiculous. Well, look, my, my, my hands are getting filthy. Here, use this ladle. But it's no use, Rowena. It, it, it simply can't... It, it can't... David, what is it? Did you touch something? Huh? Oh, yes. Something, I don't know what. Well, can you get it out? Well, yes, I, I think so. Oh, good Lord. David! It's a... Like... A wool cat. Yes. It's so filthy and old, but it's still a cat, isn't it? Is it the one you lost? Is it? Uh, yes, yes, it's the one. David, you look so strange. You look frightened. <laughs> Iris, having a picnic all by yourself? I just thought I'd lie on the grass for a while. Mm. What are you doing with the daisy? Loves me? Loves me not? Uh-huh. Want to finish it off for me, Uncle David? Cut out the Uncle David stuff. I'll finish it for you, then. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. Too bad, Uncle David. She just doesn't love you. Who? <laughs> Your wife, of course. Who else? <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> Iris, Iris, wait. Yes? Uh, look, I, uh, I want to talk to you a minute. Really? Iris, 
What's the story with you? You've been here over a week and you haven't done anything about... Well, you know what? This is just a great big picnic for you, isn't it? Hmm. What if it is? You think I want to go back to the creepy home? It's better here. No uniforms, no no 6 a.m. prayers, none of that junk they call food. Also, I like the company. I suppose I should say thank you. There's nothing you can say. I I don't know already. <laughs> I'm psychic, remember? Mm. What about that, Iris? Is it just some kind of trick? You can tell me. Mm, I'll show you if it's a trick. Want me to uh, tell you all about yourself? All right, go ahead. Okay. Your wife hates you. She thinks you're rotten. You weren't even married a year when you started running around with other women. You never went to the mill, not more than once or twice a month. That was how you ran the business. All you knew how to do was spend the money. You little brat. <laughs> you're not psychic. You're an eavesdropper. Oh, let go of my arm. Your room is right next door. You've been listening. You think I could help hearing your two arguments? No. I guess you couldn't. I'm... I'm sorry, Iris. I hope I didn't hurt you. I know a way you can make it up to me. Hmm? Like this. Go oh. oh, ahead. Now cut that out, will you? <laughs> Don't you want to kiss me? No, you dumb kid. I'm not a kid. I'm almost 17. You were 16 three months ago. I'm a woman. But you're not even a man. <laughs> David? Yes, Auntie, it's me. Oh, did you call for a taxi? A taxi? No, why should I? Oh, I don't know, but Lucas's cab is in the driveway. He said he was waiting for you. Lucas? Well, I'd better go and see what he wants. Dinner will be ready around seven, David. All right, Lucas. What are you doing here? I... I had to talk to you, Mr. Wheeler. I wanted you to know how it went. I did what you told me, exactly like you said. I hit her clean. She didn't hurt a bit. No blood. All right. I don't want to hear about it anymore, Lucas. I'm, I'm satisfied. And you should be, too. You got your money. Now forget about it. I picked up Miss Wheeler and I took her out in the woods as far as I could. I dug deep, Mr. Wheeler. I did a good job. I smoothed it over and spread them leaves so as nobody would guess it was there. Nobody except... Oh, so it's that girl you're still worried about. I heard awful funny things about her, Mr. Wheeler. About her finding things. Finding that little girl that fell near Crumpton Lake. Maybe she can see right into your sister's grave. Iris Lloyd won't find her. Nobody will. But she's right behind the house, Mr. Wheeler. She's so close. Right in the woods. You've got to forget it, Lucas. Like it never happened. My sister's disappeared and she's not coming back. As for the girl, don't believe what you hear. Nobody can see into a grave, Lucas. Nobody. <laughs> Is David Wheeler really as convinced as he sounds? Or can Lucas detect the doubt in his voice and the fear in his eyes? We'll learn more about the girl who found things when we return shortly with Act Three. Return to the Wheeler House in the town of Medvale. A house filled with people waiting for a psychic revelation from the girl who found things. But that revelation appears to be very slow in coming. That girl has been here for how long? Two weeks? It seems like two months. And she hasn't done a thing but enjoy herself. David, what's the point of our staying on? You said you had some affairs to settle. You don't seem to be conducting any business at all. Well, I haven't been in the mood for business. That's nothing very new, is it? How long are you going to keep that light on? I'd like to get some sleep. If you think Iris Lloyd is indulging herself, what about you? Shh, be quiet. I told you that she can hear every nasty little quarrel in this room. That's why I asked for a truce. Well, she doesn't have to eavesdrop, does she? Can't she read minds? Well, she's not the only clairvoyant around here. 
I can read her mind, too. Oh, she's a child, for heaven's sake. She's in love with you. Of course, there's a minor obstruction in her plans, a small matter of your wife. But then I've never been much of a hindrance to your romances, have I? I thought you agreed to that truce. <laughs> you are a pacifist, David. That's part of your charm. That's why you came up here in March, wasn't it? To make peace with Geraldine. I came here on business. You came to keep Geraldine from sending you to prison. That was the business. You know nothing about it. I have eyes, David. I know you were taking money from the mill. Too much money. Geraldine knew it, too. How much time did she give you to make up the law? All right. If you won't let me get some sleep here, I'll sleep in the library. David! David, is that you? Uh, yes. Yes, Aunt Faith. What are you doing up? Oh, I, I heard a noise. Oh, well, it was me, probably. I, I was just going down to the library to uh, find a book to read. No, it wasn't you. David, hmm? look. What? Oh, it's Iris. Yes, in her nightgown. What's she doing in the front hall, just like that? David, she's sleepwalking. What? Look in her eyes. David, we have to follow no, her. No, let, let her alone, Annie. You're not supposed to disturb a sleepwalker, are you? I've got to follow her. All right, I'll come with you. David, she's talking to herself. Can you hear her? What did I forget? What did I forget? Did you hear that? Did, did, did you hear what she said? Yes, but I, I don't understand it. Why doesn't the taxi get here? Why doesn't it get here? Taxi... She said something about a taxi, David. Yes, yes, I, I, I heard her. Uh, oh, we have to be going to the station. I'm so nervous. I'm always so nervous when I go on a trip. Please get my luggage. My luggage. Oh, dear God, David. She's in a trance. She's talking the way... Oh, what did I forget? Gas? Electricity? Telephone? The fireplace. Is the fireplace cold? <gasps> oh, no! Not the fireplace! Not the fireplace! Oh, what does she mean? I don't know, but... Auntie, I think this is wrong. I think we should get her back to bed. No. Don't touch her, David. Don't. Look. Hmm? She's heading for the back of the house. Come on. Yes. Yes, we've got to follow her. I think she means to go outside. We can't let her do that. Maybe it's important... Maybe it's something to do with Geraldine. Oh, don't be insane. She's just sleepwalking. That's all it is. Iris. Iris, wake up. David, don't. You must You want that girl to catch pneumonia? Iris. No. Iris. Iris. Don't. Please. Iris. Don't. Iris, don't. wake up. Don't. Oh, David, in front of you, don't. You're not supposed to wake a sleepwalker. Everybody Let knows that. Let me go. Stop it. Stop, Stop it. Me. Iris. Me. Iris, it's only me, Iris. He's trying to kill me. He wants to kill me. No, 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 darling, it's all right. It's only us. Wake up, I said, wake up. Oh, you poor child, you poor baby. Oh, David, that was a cruel thing to do. Oh, and say yes. Iris, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, are you all right? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm all right now. Oh, I was so frightened for you, dear. Yes, but I'm all right. I think... I... I think that I'm Ready? Ready? What do you mean, dear? I think I can do it now. I think I might be able to tell you. You mean you mean where Geraldine is? Yes. I think I can. Oh, David, we've got to call Lieutenant Reese. Reese? At this hour? I told him I would call him whenever Iris thought she knew something. I promised him I'd call. But it's almost midnight, Auntie. He'll come. I know he will. I'll telephone him myself. You take Iris to her room. Oh, yes, yes, all right. Uh, come on, Iris. Yes, Uncle David. Well, Uncle David, are you scared? What are you talking about? You look scared. Scared of me? Shut up. <laughs> I thought you would be. The minute you heard that I was ready... I'm sending you back. Iris, you're a fake. Even your sleepwalking act was a fake. Oh, David, David. You're so cute. You really are. But you know what? I don't have to be ready. I don't have to do anything at all when that policeman gets here. Not if you don't want me to. You... You don't know what you're talking about. You better kiss me now, David. 
you better kiss me and make it really good. All right. All right, if that's what you want. Mm. David! Get out of here! I don't want you in my room! Rowena! You were right about the walls between these rooms, David. You can hear every little thing. I hate you! David hates you, too! Tell her, David, why don't you tell her? Yes. Why don't you, David? It's the only thing you haven't done so far. David! Uh, Yes, Aunt Faith? Oh, I just spoke to Lieutenant Reese. He says he's on his way. What for? You are ready, Iris, aren't you? You're ready to tell us where Geraldine is? Yes. I'm ready to tell you, Aunt Faith. More than ready. Are you sure she's all right, Mrs. Demarest? She looks awfully pale to me. Iris always looks that way when she enters the trance. It's a fraud, Lieutenant. The whole thing is a fraud. You mustn't be taken in. Well, I'm just trying to keep an open mind, Mr. Wheeler. Oh, it's starting. I think she's going to say something. Oh, no. Iris, look, you've got to stop this. That girl is working herself into some kind of fit. It's all her own doing, isn't it? Well, uh... Maybe Mr. Wheeler's right. The girl might do herself some harm. No, no. You must wait. Listen. Listen. Aunt Faith. Aunt Faith, I'm here. I'm here, Aunt Faith. Come and find me. Oh, help me. It's so dark. Oh, won't somebody help me? Oh, it's Geraldine. Oh, dear Lord, it's her. Oh, where are you? Oh, Geraldine, my poor darling. Where are you? Oh, help me, help me. It's so dark. And I'm so Where, Geraldine? Where? Tell us where you are. Someplace far away. A place with ships. The sun is shining. I saw hills and green trees. There are bells ringing in the street. She's out of her head completely. A uh, place with ships, bells ringing in the streets. I see water, a bridge, trolley cars in the street, going up and down the hill. San Francisco. I'm sure she means San Francisco. Yes, it sounds like it. Iris, do you mean San Francisco? Is that where Geraldine is? Yes, yes, that's where she is. Well... Who knows? It's as good a guess as I've heard. Uh, Has Miss Wheeler ever been in San Francisco before? Never. Why would she go there, David? (laughs) I really wouldn't know. But if that's where Iris says she is, I I guess the spirits know what they're talking about. She's waking up. I want to go home. Oh, please, somebody take me home. Dear Sister Clotilde. Well, your idea was a huge success, Auntie. But I can't say that I'm not glad to see little Iris back where she belongs. Yes, the poor child. It's the only home she knows. Mm. Now all the police have to do is find Geraldine in San Francisco. If she hasn't taken a boat to South America by now. I, I just don't understand it. it. It's not like Geraldine to run away without a word. Well, here we are, home again. <sighs> Aren't you coming in, David? Oh, not just yet. I thought I'd go into town and pick up some champagne. I thought we'd celebrate a bit tonight. Well, hello, Lucas. How's the taxi business, huh? Uh, Could be better. You uh, got any news for me, Mr. Wheeler? Oh, yes, Lucas. I've got good news. It's all over. Iris Lloyd is back at the Medvale School for Girls. Then she didn't know. She couldn't find out where, the, where that woman was. She didn't know, Lucas. Just as I promised. Uh-huh. <laughs> I did the right thing. I know it was the right thing, Mr. Weir, but I didn't want to tell you. Uh, right thing? What do you mean? Well, I figured that girl could tell if the body was buried right outside the house, but she'd never find it if it was someplace else, someplace far away. Lucas, what are you talking about? I went out into the woods last week and dug up that woman's body. 
I put it in that trunk of hers, Mr. Wheeler, and I sent it by train as far away as I could. Too far away for that girl. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Wheeler. What? Oh, oh uh, Lieutenant Reese. I wonder if we could have a talk, Mr. Wheeler? About what? We've received a telegram from the West Coast. Now, the police out there didn't have any luck tracing your sister, but they did have a report on a steamer trunk. A trunk? It was in unclaimed baggage at the Southern Pacific Depot. It was shipped from Medvale only last week, and, well, it had Miss Wheeler's initials on it. No, it had more than that. So, can we go somewhere and talk about San Francisco? Well, Iris Lloyd is back in her own bed tonight, and her dreams will probably be peaceful. But David Wheeler is in for a nightmare that may last him for the rest of his life. I'll be back shortly. Do you think you have clairvoyant powers? Have you ever had the experience of finding something that everyone else thought was lost? Actually, you've done exactly that. You found the magical world of radio drama. And now that you've made this find, we hope you'll come back for more suspenseful dramas to play inside the theater of your mind. Our cast included Norman Rose, Bryna Rayburn, Robert Dryden, Martha Greenhouse, Barbara Caruso, and Anne Costello. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now... A preview of our next tale. All right, Mr. Thompson. I'm a human being, too. And I guess if I got a letter telling me that I was rich, I wouldn't go into mourning. I'd probably go out and celebrate. That's why I wanted to see you. To suggest arranging that happy event without the slightest trouble on your part. Without any obligation until you're completely satisfied. Now, in a short time, you'll receive another letter from Johannesburg informing you of the sad news that your cousin, Mr... Well, I still won't reveal his name. Let him remain anonymous. That'll make your decision a great deal easier, I'm sure. What decision? The decision to inherit his estate. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>